You ready? Yeah. All right. Well, good morning, everybody, or should I say good afternoon? Uh, thank you so much for attending. So today, uh, my name is Christopher Harris. Uh, the class that I'm here that I'm going to speak with you a little bit about is understanding and investigating building forensics. I am using. Um, oh, and by the way, what I do. So I'm an architectural historian. I work for a company called Cardno now Stantec. It was Cardno. We just recently got bought out by Stantec. So what we do is we are a private cultural resource firm, and we do kind of anything related to uh, environmental review and compliance. Uh, we also do, so with that, it's mostly Section 106 reviews. Is anybody familiar with those, what they are? Um, if not, feel free. It's kind of complicated, but um, so basically it's a way that I, I tell people that's the way the federal government checks themselves to make sure they don't fund anything that'll have a detrimental impact on America's historic resources. So you gotta go through this big environmental compliance. It includes other things, archeology, span bat studies, floral and fauna studies, vibration studies. So the architectural review part of it is just a small section of a 106 review. So that's what I do. We also do national register listings. Um, and uh, really anything, so if someone wants to hire us to write a book, we would do it. So uh, kind of anything in the field of history and historic preservation. Prior to working with Cardinal Now Stantec, I um, did work in the city of Newport. I was their historic preservation assistant here. So uh, I've been involved in, with Northern Kentucky Restoration Weekend as well. So and then prior to that, I kind of went out and volunteered myself out to try to get in the field. You know, I've always had a love for history and historic preservation. Uh, when I got out of my undergrad, way back in the day, of course I couldn't get a job, so I started in the service industry and bartended, I still bartend to this day. It's always nice to have extra cash. Um, so then I eventually decided to go back to school, went to NKU, got my master's in public history, but I worked in more for historic preservation. Um, and then landed the job here in Newport, which gained me more experience and met people and then eventually uh, started working for Cardinal, so it's definitely a, private is way different from public, but um, so that's a different class. But today we are going to discuss investigating and understanding building forensics. I am using for my case study. Uh, we did get hired out um, by Orleans Development. They are a local development company here. They're based out of Covington. Uh, so what they do is they purchase usually larger scale buildings. Uh, they get them listed on the National Register. And then in their rehabilitation of the building, they take advantage of historic tax credits. Uh, so which is the reason why we were hired by them to get this building here, uh, 635 Dayton Avenue in Dayton, Kentucky. Is anybody familiar with the building? Uh, it's beautiful, it's the largest building there. Uh, it doesn't look like much in this picture, but um, it will hopefully become a, a grand, grand gym again. Uh, because they do, especially using tax credits, uh, they have to use as much of, uh, use and reuse as much of the historic uh, materials that are there. So, um, so what we're going to do here first, I'm going to figure out, try to figure out what people do know um, when it comes to learning, uh, just kind of the, the history of their building and its evolution. Uh, discuss some previous investigations, um, which are, and we'll get into that. Deed and title research, maps and plats, and then other resources. Um, hopefully we breeze right through that section because I know the main thing why you guys are here are using the physical evidence of your building to try to learn about the history and evolution of it. Uh, and then finally making sense of it all, which is uh, sometimes can be quite overwhelming when dealing with this. There's a lot of things to do. So has anybody done any research on their own home that they have interested in it? You have, you have, and you know, sometimes to know where to start, it can be overwhelming. Um, you don't know where to start. You usually can just walk into the library, and be like, "Okay, where's my home? Who, who is? Where, what's going on here?" And you know, sometimes like, "Well, we don't really know." Um, so I'll be, uh, you know, with, with <coughs> doing it. Um, what? Where did you go first when you wanted to learn about your house? Um, Call you out. <laughs> <laughs> Finding deeds. Finding deeds. Yes, and. Um, and how was your uh, how was your deed process search process? Um, actually, was helped by the former owner. So, oh, yeah. Um, he had certain numbers written down, mm -hmm. so it was easier. Um, but I also just um, I googled 
my house and um, did some other things. Yeah, okay. Well, and that's all is great. Um, would you call that a failure, a success? success? You learned something? Good. All right, Mr. Davis, how about you, sir? When you were researching your home, what, what steps did you do? I went to the courthouse and just went through the deed books and went yep. back, 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 and just followed all the way back. Yeah, all right. So, um, and as you know, though, that, that's just a small part of the research. It's nice to do that because it actually gives you names, and that's really important when trying to understand the uh, background of your house. So it can be overwhelming. Hopefully with some of these things, I can give you points of where to start. If uh, I know there was a research in your house class before this. Who took that? Or who, who was in that? So if it's a repeat, tell me, Chris, go through. I already know this. Uh, we don't. It's fine. Okay. Um, and if anybody does have any questions, stop me at any time. Yell out, scream out, throw something at me. It's fine. Christopher. Um, so about research your home, uh, uh, my wife and I, we recently redid our bathroom. Mm -hmm. and we found some stuff in the wall. Uh, a lot of the finishes were really not that great. The floor was built up. And so, like, peeling back layers, we were learning stuff about the second floor of the house and, like, how the walls were originally, yeah. or at least historically. Uh, so, that was a good resource for us. And I, I wonder if you have any, any uh, insight into that. Uh, well, when it comes to that, I do have in here that sometimes major or minor demolition does help. Mm -hmm. if, if you're planning on redoing a wall room, anyways, tear out all the walls, get down to the original studs. A lot of times within that, you can find your original floor openings or window openings, door openings if they're there. Sometimes you see little shadows on the floor, like, oh, they moved this wall out five feet. You know, bathrooms are a lot larger than they used to be. And sometimes these historic homes did not even have bathrooms in them. So, or kitchens. So, you know, they, a lot of times will just make do with what they got. Same with closets. A lot of times these, these rooms, these houses, they originally did not have closets. So if you go into your closet, you can tell, like, oh, this, this is strange. Why is this here? And you can sometimes peel back the layers of the closet and figure things out. Um, so that's kind of my advice is, you know, if, if you're going to remodel, definitely demolition is great. Uh, I'm not saying go and rip it out all your walls in your brand new house that you've just redone because it's, it'll cost more. Um, but so when it first comes to learning about uh, the history of your home, I always first start out previous investigations using what has other people done? Let's make it easy on yourself here. What, what is, so, someone's already done the work potentially. Let's look into it. So we have the National Register of Historic Places, previous surveys, local landmark designations, and then historic plaque programs, which a lot of cities have those here. So someone, chances are, might have already done the research. So first off, everyone familiar with the National Register of Historic Places? Yes, okay, so we don't have to go into this a whole lot. Uh, tons of listings, and it's basically a list of um, building structure, sites, objects, landscapes within the United States that are worthy of preservation. Um, doesn't do anything as a homeowner, make you do or not do with your property. All it really does is allow you to apply for federal and state historic tax credits, uh, which is a great benefit of being listed on the National Register. Uh, then, of course, there is, we can get this, historic property surveys, maybe. There we go. Um, so these are what you use when you go out in the field, especially in my field of 106. We go out there, we, we survey property, and we use this survey to assess the building's historic integrity. Uh, both of these properties here, uh, we did with our work, recommend them eligible for listing on the National Register. Um, and they don't look like much, but when you get up close to them, they, they are beautiful buildings. Um, but with that, you, you assess the, uh, oh, I see I got an extra space there. Um, the seven aspects of historic, of, uh, of, of historic integrity is, uh, and the more of these they check off the list, the more likely this property is eligible to be listed on the National Register. So these are hanging out. You can get them at the State Historic Preservation Office. A lot of times the city has them. So what they do is someone's done the research, they have a photograph, they have the years built, additions, things like that. So a lot of the evolution of the house has been um, has been there. So, and then also, let's see, other, and here's the, the deed research, if we can get to this here. Um, so, if anyone hasn't done it, it can be a little overwhelming for deed research. Uh, my advice to people is, go to the PVA, print off the most current information or deeds you have on your house. You get this nice little number up here that tells you what book it's in, what and what page number it is in that book. And from there, you just work your way backwards because each deed will have a corresponding number for the previous book. 
and eventually you just go until you can't find it. So with our, um, and then also there, you know, with the deeds, it has property owners, usually transfer sales properties, discusses property lines, uh, has a coordinating plat to go with it, and sometimes if you see a property being sold for a dollar or two, that means they've usually passed it along to one of their kids. Um, if you see all of a sudden this property has jumped up in significant value, they've either built something on the property or they've added an addition to it. So a lot of times they can tell this stuff here. Uh, for that Dayton project, of course, we did find, it's hard to see, this is the original deed to it. It's like book four uh, there. Of course, it was built after, especially Campbell County gets a little tricky uh, because I believe, when did Campbell County start? 1840, I think, somewhere around there. Anything prior to a certain date, they're actually, the deeds are in Alexandria, Kentucky because Newport was not the county seat, or Campbell, sorry, Campbell County. I guess actually, no, it's Kitten County, I apologize. Kitten County was formed out of Campbell County. So if you get past a certain date, they're no longer in Kitten County. They're in Campbell County at the Alexandria Courthouse because that's where the original deeds were for, uh, I believe it's 1840 prior to that. So with us in the city setting here, we don't really have to deal with that far, but if you have a historic farmstead or something like that, sometimes you do. Yes? Um, here I've noticed you actually have to go there. Um, there is a website, it's called deeds.com. They want you to pay for it, sometimes they're free. Um, it just depends where you're looking. Um, Warren County has all their deeds digitized, which is an absolute blessing. Uh, here, they are not. They do have some of them digitized, but it only goes back, I think, to the, maybe the, 80s, 1980s, so, but that's just when they've started. I, I don't know if they'll ever digitize them. It's quite a task. Um, so, but it's kind of, and especially in my line of work, you know, I was just down in Loudoun County, Tennessee. I would love to do a deed research on the property right now, but I am not gonna get paid to drive down there to do this research. So I'm hoping I'm gonna call them, let them know what I'm doing, and maybe they will do it for me. They kind of frown upon that though. They're like, we're not here to do your research. If you wanna come in, you're more than welcome to, but we're not looking it up for you. So I, I usually will tell them the circumstances. Sometimes they'll do it, sometimes they don't. It never hurts to ask. Um, so, but yes, especially here, it's, you gotta go. And sometimes that's the fun of it, uh, especially when you get to these old books. I mean, they're like this big, and you flip the pages over and you see the original handwriting of the recorder and all that. And it, it, they're very interesting to look through. Um, they can be overwhelming, especially, if that's why it's very important to have your very first one Write everything down. They, you know, you can sometimes make up a little paper that shows, you know, you put the deed numbers, and names, who bought it, how much, and then just go down your list. Um, they do frown upon photographing. They want you to pay for copies, but sometimes I just take my camera and make sure no one's looking and take a quick snip of it. I use the PDF converter on my phone. Um, a lot of times they want you to pay for it because it's uh, when there's legal battles, you know, property line disputes, lawyers are involved, clients always paying something to a lawyer, that's where they front the cost to it. But now if you're a little, someone wanting to research your home, just do it quickly. I, I'm not saying that you should or should not do it, but it, it's easy enough. Um, so, but yeah, but so just do it. They all mostly all have cameras, but um, you know what, I, I have been told not to take pictures anymore. I'm like, okay, thank you, sorry. Um, and I've been told, you know what, just take a snapshot of it real quick. So it just depends on who's working. Um, so, um, but yeah, so that's your deed research. They do also have plat maps there, usually with PVA. Uh, and then you can find the original plat for it for the Dayton Street project, or Dayton, uh, the Dayton, uh, or 6th Street Avenue. You know, we found uh, Burton Hazen's subdivision of Brooklyn, you know, it was platted when Brooklyn and Jamestown is what became Dayton. They formed, merged together, become Dayton, I believe, in. Oh, I don't know, 1862, 1868, I can't remember the exact date, but, so that's your deeds. Um, that's always very important to do, because what that does, that gives you names. You can actually search from those names, who lived there, what businesses were there. So it's very important, especially as a researcher, to get names. Um, and then, of course, there's maps and plats as well. Um, these are very important because they help you date your building, um, and especially with these right here, the sandboard maps are very important because they actually show your floor plan and your original floor out there. Uh, but you know, you look at the topographic maps, there's little dots on here, you're like, okay, there's a dot here where my building is, so it must have been from this date. Of course, this one I think is from 1940. 
Um, of course, there's historic atlases that do the same thing. Campbell County's got a great one. Um, Kenton County as well has a great atlas that's decently old. I think it's from 1872, um, which by then most of the properties in Covington and the basin were there. Um, and then your plat maps, of course. Uh, but these Sanborn maps, and I wish I had a larger picture of it. Is everybody familiar with these? Because these are very important. They tell you what your, your original shape of the building, construction materials, how tall it was, where your windows openings were sometimes, sometimes where your gas were, things like that. So, um, and these can be found at a number of places. I find the best place to find them is the uh, National Archives. Usually you can download them. Uh, same with the Library of Congress. The Kentucky Digital Library has them. Uh, even though they did some, something funky with their website a couple years ago and it doesn't work the same. Uh, but for this area, I found the best place is the Cincinnati Public Library. They have a local history uh, digital library and you can actually download all PDFs of all Covington and Newport and even Cincinnati of their Sanborn maps. They have most of the years. Then you have them on your computer and you can look at them anytime. Uh, so you can go there too and look at them. They the, they're, they're in books about this big. So you can look at the sheets. Um, Barringer Crawford might have some as well. Uh, Kitt, the Kitt County Library has some as well. They even have some Newports there because Kitt County Library is also a great resource because they have their local history and genealogy departments where all these libraries and a lot of Newport stuff has gone there too. They just send it there. They, I don't know if they got a grant to build this wing or what, but they send all the local Northern Kentucky history um, materials there and Boone County Library. I haven't worked with them a lot, but there's a lady that works there. She's amazing. You know who she is, Kate? I forget. She's been there for a little bit. Um, I don't use her a whole lot, but the people I talk with, they're like, oh, that's what she does. She loves research and um, keeps track of it. So, um, let's see if I can pick this up. No, I guess not. Oh, there you go. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some maps and plats, um, and all these are just preliminary research for learning about your home. Because when you go in and want to know more of the history about it, these are always great starting points. Um, of course, there's other resources, the Williams directories. These are great because they're the phone books of the time. You take those names you get from your deeds, you can see where they live, what they did for a living, uh, things like that. And that's what we did with the Dayton Avenue project. Um, so this is not the right date for this, but it shows what the building was, city clerk's office, city jail, marshal's office, treasurer's office, but it also, there was a barber shop there, there was, oh, there was a, uh, like, travel agents and, and banks and things like that uh, in there. So that's just a snip of it. And then your newspapers, newspaper.com. Because of that, we were actually find a picture of Mr. Burton, who was the original owner of the plat there. Um, I use newspapers.com. Um, Faces of Places, Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati Memory Project is a great one. Um, Northern Kentucky, uh, findagrave.com is always great. I don't know if anyone's used that, but they usually have family trees plotted out for you. So if you have a name, you can figure out, okay, here's their kids, here's their parents, here's where they lived. And then from there, you of course then take these names again and go look um, at ancestry.com, look it up there as well. So of course, this is all very, what I do before, all preliminary, before learning about the building. Um, is there any questions on this part? I think this was the last one for these. Let's see. Um, no, uh, this is more about local places to look. A lot of times you can find everything in one place, public libraries, universities, historic societies, nat I mean, National Park Service, National Archives, Library of Congress, PVA, State Historic Preservation Offices. And the one I use a lot is just straight Google. Punch in what you're looking for. You never know what'll show up. If you're writing something that you need to cite sources, try to find that original source. It's not really that good just to cite a random website on Google, but it usually